Hello everyone, this week we're going to continue off what we did last week with our throttle body spacer. However, we're going to add a little automation to what we're doing. So we're going to start that first by picking up the corner of our part with a probe, as well as adding an in-process check with probe geometry to auto-update tool wear or to shut down the machine in the event that the tool breaks. So with that, let's go ahead and jump inside of Fusion and take a look at how to do this. Okay, so as you can see, I already have my part file open. I have my tool pass from last week. I did get rid of the, uh, a couple of things out of here just to streamline this a little bit. But the key element is, is that I have my finishing pass here, which we are gonna adjust here in a moment. But let's start by picking up the corner of our part. So we're gonna go up to the inspect tab. We're gonna do a probe WCS. We're going to define our probe. So in this case, I'm just using a six millimeter default probe from inside of Fusion. Looks a lot like a Renishaw probe. It's going to be very similar to what you may have in your machine. Now, in my geometry tab, this is where I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick my stock. So what I want to do is I want to pick my reference point. So in this case, I'm picking my back left corner where my WCS is. However, if I wanted to, I could also pick the top of my stock, to which gives me a center on center X and Y. The neat thing is, is even though my WCS is over here in the corner, it's not going to shift it to center of my part like some people think. It's actually going to keep it there and just shift it the little bit that it needs it to shift based on those cycles. In my case, I'm just going to pick up this back left corner. I'm not going to worry about getting perfectly on center. I do have some forgiveness in my roughing cycle because of that. So now that we've picked our corner, I'm going to go ahead and jump over it, and we're going to say in the actions tab, in the event we're out of position, we could turn on a stop with message. Again, that out of position is controlled in the geometry tab. So if it's out of position by more than 40 thou, it'll actually stop and shut down the machine. Uh, in my case, if I had to worry about, so to say, on a flip of a part and picking up a bore, much more important to have this. But in my first operation, not so much. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I just wanted to show you all where that's at. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So. Now that we're picking up that corner, I'm gonna go ahead and reorder this by dragging it to the top of all of my operations. Because of course, first thing we wanna do is find where our stock is in the machine and then go into our machining cycles. Well, now that we've actually cut our part, let's go in and let's measure our bore to make sure that our tool is correctly set in the tolerancing as well as making good parts each and every time. So I'm gonna go up to the top. Again, we're in that inspection tab. We're gonna go to probe geometry. Now, if you don't see probe geometry on your toolbar or you're getting a little blue plug-in symbol that looks very similar to this guy over here, you can start a free trial of the machining extension to attempt to use this and things of that nature. Keep in mind, we at JITCAD Cam, we could also sell you the machining extension and there is a link in my bio below. So after you like and subscribe, check out our website. You're more than welcome to purchase through us. Anything can help, right? But to get probe geometry, you still need the machining extension. So with the machining extension, you can actually go in, and again, this is gonna look familiar when we did WCS. Do we wanna probe the model? Do we wanna probe the stock? Well, we're using the model this time, and I'm using the inside of this bore. One neat thing about this actual tool path, or I should say probe path, I guess, is the fact that in the event I was doing like a C-clamp or something that wasn't a perfect cylinder, all 360 degrees around, there might be actually a gap somewhere. I can go in and I can actually tell it that, hey, I only want to do a partial hole kind of probing system. And I can kind of drag these around and position them to any place that I want. So again, as if there was a feature or a gap in the way, I could skip that. I can also go in and I could actually say, is there an island in the middle? And as you'll see, my probe will now come down in over and jump any feature that might be in the middle. For my case, this is just a circular hole, no big deal. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna say X, Y circular hole. I'm not gonna do anything with an island because I don't wanna lose out on cycle time, but we're gonna move down. And you can see here, we could do a same size diameter, the same as drilling. Same thing we could do is we could go down to our tolerancing and this is the most important part. So I'm actually gonna set it to plus or minus five tenths because this is a very critical bore that I wanna check. From here, we could jump to our heights tab. For those of you that don't know, sometimes when you actually go in and measure, if you measure at the top, it's gonna to be much larger than the bottom due to tool deflection. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down. 
probably getting critiqued at this point from those of you that are machinists that are like, I would never use an end mill to make a plus or minus five tenths hole, things of that nature. Guys, I understand that fully. It's just to show you the breakdown on how to use this tool path. So in the actions tab, I'm gonna start by just turning on wrong size and we're gonna stop the machine, which is gonna give us an error message that's gonna tell us the bore is the wrong size. We're gonna come back and change the tool wear automatically here in a minute. So again, we've set up a very basic cycle and that very basic cycle is driven off just doing an in-process inspection. Well, now, if we actually wanna go in and use that probe to adjust tool wear, we're gonna to have to split up our actual contour where we're finishing our part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this and then I'm going to change it because I don't want the inner chain inside of here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So now we're just doing the outer chain on this path. Vice versa, I go to my second contour path and we're gonna edit that. I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna actually get rid of the outside chain. And now this is the trick. So I'm gonna go over to the passes tab and you can see how I have wear compensation set already. You're gonna wanna turn that on so that you can update that tool path. So with that, I'm now going to drag my probing cycle up because I like to probe it right after we cut it, right? I'm gonna go into my probing cycle and we're gonna say update tool wear. Now what Fusion's asking for is what is the operation that you're actually using to cut that profile? So I'm gonna go to the profile right above. And as you're gonna see, it's pulling that number two half inch flat tool. And as you can see, there's no radial stock to leave. So in this scenario, I'm cutting it true to size. And with that true to size, I'm checking it after the fact. Now we're gonna adjust that here in a minute and we're gonna do a pre and a post cut to also advance this technique. But now minimum update threshold. So this is something that is different for everybody. I'm actually going to go half of what my actual tolerancing is of that hole. So when I came in here and I set a size of plus or minus five tenths, I'm going to only update when it's out by more than two and a half tenths. Does that mean we're gonna be two and a half tenths out of five? No, that means when we're two and a half tenths away from perfect, then make a correction. Another thing I'm gonna do is I don't want it to do a 100% correction because it could actually overcorrect by accident. So I'm gonna shoot for about a 75% correction, getting me back within that two and a half tenths and getting me as close back to perfect as possible. One other thing that's really neat here, guys, is you can actually print these results. So if you're trying to do first articles or somebody wants to see a consistent results across all of your parts, you could go ahead and do that as well and keep that documentation for your customer. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So again, we use that probe geometry to do an inspection in the middle of our part. And what's going to happen is it's going to alarm out in the event that it's the wrong size, meaning it's larger than five tenths. Now we also have it making a correction if it's off by more than two and a half tenths. So now let's look at a little different scenario. So we're just checking it after each part. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna set this up to do a pre and a post cut so that we could actually prep the probe and then dial it in even tighter. So again, I'm going to duplicate this tool path and then I'm gonna drag that one after my probing cycle. So now if we go back in, to that first pre-cut. And what I'm gonna do here for you guys is we're gonna say this is pre, and then this is gonna be my post. And the reason for that is, is it just makes it a little easier to identify. So let's go into our pre, and I'm going to actually do a stock to leave, and let's go ahead and leave five thou on that bore, and zero on the floors. And now you're gonna see my actual tool path is out of date for my probing. And the reason why it's out of date, is we're gonna go in there, is in this action tab, it now sees that 5,000 wear being presented or 5,000 stock to leave automatically and accounting for that in our cycle. So again, is I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, which has updated that. And then again, we're coming in and we're chasing that to actually bore it true to size and then finishing out the rest of our cycle. That wraps up another Milling Monday video. And with that said, before we go, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. As well, feel free to check out our support portal online 
And keep in mind that we at JITCAD CAM can do custom training to selling you your software and supporting you in any way inside of Fusion 360. 